at the opening of, of the day. I was talking about 70% of transformations fail. Uh, it's the number one risk, 900 billion. So we identify and say, we must do something. We must start thinking on what we can do to leverage and benefit the society with that. And, and during these months, I was thinking, OK, who should we partner with uh, to make this happen? Because we, we need to get it, I would say, fast. And we need to get something that is aligned with our values. And I was very happy to hear today talking about people, talking about people, so how we can help organizations and what we can do with organizations to impact the society. And this uh, makes me go back a little bit on the time. I was for five years a uh, director for infrastructure and project management at the United Nations. And in 2015, I was at Stanford University uh, doing a course, and I met our speaker, uh, Professor Tabrizi. And I said, look, I think we, we found a good path forward to do that. So uh, we identify someone that shares the passion and the knowledge about how we can make a positive transformation. So Professor Ben Antobrizi is a faculty of organizational transformation at Stanford University for the past 25 years. He is the author of several bestsellers on transformation including the 90-day rapid transformation that sold more than a million copies worldwide. Professor Tabriz published, and, and this is a really uh, uh, something that uh, impressed me a lot, in uh, this March, he published it on Harvard Business Review, an article called Digital Transformation is Not About Technology. Yeah. And since March this year, this article is on the top three most popular articles. And just at the break, I went again to check, and it's now number one. And, and all of you know what it takes for you to be at number one uh, uh, on Harvard Business Review. So we are very, really, I'm very excited uh, uh, to bring him here. We did a work that he will explain a little bit more, uh, trying to collaborate and trying to bring something that you saw a little bit outside, that is what we are calling Bright Line Transformation Compass, to see how we can address transformation in a positive way. So, and I need to be really honest here. Um, I never thought in my life that I would be one day on a stage like this introducing him. Okay, so please, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Professor Ben Antabrizi. Thank you, Ricardo, for your kind, kind introduction. Um, when Ricardo, uh, called me um, early this year and talked about his dream. He also noted that he was, uh, he took an executive program at Stanford where I was teaching. And I said, wow, you know, uh, he took 40 hours of my class and he still likes me. <laughs> so that's a great thing. And then another thing that really got me excited is that I said, Ricardo, since you're from Brazil, you know, my favorite uh, topic is soccer, so we can talk about soccer all the time while we're doing this project. And he said, Professor, I want to share with you something. I don't follow soccer. <laughs> Other than that, he's perfect. <laughs> and we've had a magical uh, collaboration. I want to thank uh, Sunil Prashara, CEO of PMI, of course, Ricardo, Alwin Magimai, Tyro Akshay, Eddie and the team at Brightline. Um, in the late 1990s, uh, I had uh, my, the world around me crumbled. I had a uh, existential breakdown. And uh, to, to deal with this pain, I decided that I want to transform 100 million people before I die. And uh, you know, because of the collaboration with Brightline and PMI, I feel like we are a step closer to fulfilling that dream. Uh, the bigger the pain, the bigger the project. I'd like to start with how many of you in the past three years, now or in the next three years, have worked or planning to work on some major change project in your organizations? Raise your hand. 100%, right? 99%, if you will. Um, unfortunately, 
the, the data, as Ricardo said, it's not very promising. Um, depending on what research you look at, anywhere between 70 to 80 percent of transformation fail. And nearly $900 billion were wasted in digital transformation efforts last year. The CEOs surveyed mentioned digital transformation as their number one risk factor here in 2019. And this is the last one is what concerns me the most. Uh, survey by Gallup poll of uh, millions of people around the world shows that 85% of employees globally are not engaged. What that means is they're either checked out or they're sleepwalking at work. The numbers are better in US. Uh, in US it's actually 70% of employees globally not engaged at work, but that's still really not good. That's bad for our organizations and that's bad for our humanity. So our ap approach is evidence-based. The team that we worked with uh, bring in 100 years of experience from diverse organizations such as United Nations to McKinsey and Company. And I have worked on, uh, I have data on 1,038 transformations. And I have had the pleasure of coaching over 100 organizations. And uh, since my dream, I uh, wrote five books on transformation, but particularly two of them are important for this discussion. One is, as Ricardo mentioned, rapid transformation, which is about the fact that technology changes exponentially, but people and organization change logarithmically. And rapid transformation is about how do you actually get organizations and people, how do you have them change, if you will, exponentially through buy-in and movement across the organization. And the latest one, which I'm really proud of, is the inside-out effect, which is the fact that the biggest obstacle to people's change is what goes on in their head, including the leaders. And if you think of rapid transformation as tools for doing things, tools for doing transformation, inside out is tools for being a transformation leader. So based on research, what we have found, the drivers of such a high failures in organizations are, number one, employees are not engaged. Just about every successful transformation that we've studied, there was a lot, there was a full engagement of people across the organization. Second, um, and this is the root cause of, a, of some of the problems that we saw, which is failure to align employees' aspirations to the organization's North Star. Also what we've had is we've had this situation where people in the organization are not really aware of all the changes that happens in the ecosystem and it's not clear to them. And another challenge with transformation is that you might get a big you know, uptick in your success of your transformation, but after a while many transformations kind of fizzle out. How do we make transformations perpetual? And finally, uh, when you have armies of outsiders kind of running the transformation, it's really a problem. Uh, and the key to successful transformation is have armies of people inside the organization leading the transformation. So we're not against having outsiders and external consultants. I, we believe they play a very critical role, but we have to be mindful of the people inside. It's all about the people inside the organization. So here's a transformation uh, compass. And it's, uh, later on today, we'll give you a step-by-step -step playbook on uh, transformation. And the key to uh, the transformation, the Bright Line Transformation Compass, is really we put people at the center of transformation. And this is how Jim McNerney today ended his talk about the importance of people. One of the key principles of this, transform of this Bright Line Transformation is aligning and creating a movement that aligns the inside out with the outside in, if you will. Uh, one of the successful CEOs of a, a, a large organization once told me, the outside in work would not work if we do not do the inside out work really well. And the inside out work is challenging, it's arduous, and it's very, very difficult. And we want to address that 
And I'm going to basically talk about two key ingredients of this uh, model. Later on, we'll uh, uh, share with you all the details of this model. The first thing I want to talk about is really what we call the inside out employee transformation. And the question is, why is it that people are willing to work for the money, but at the same time, they die for a cause? Why is it that people are so unhappy and disengaged at work? How do we unleash the untapped potential of people in organizations? How do we move barriers so that people boldly step into greatness, be fully alive and aligned, and find real joy at work? Here is an example of an organization that did that. K-Bank is one of the largest banks in Thailand. And just like any bank around the world, is going through major disruptions. And this, uh, the uh, president of the bank runs the uh, 12,000 uh, retail and small medium enterprise organization across uh, Thailand. And uh, he went to uh, Carnegie Mellon and MIT. And I have his, his permission to talk about his personal story and the inside out effect that took place here. Uh, when we first met, he expressed frustration. Frustration with changing a 74-year-old traditional industry organization, which was very seniority-based. People were disengaged, not unlike the survey you just saw. At the same time, they've done some amazing outside-in work. They've created one of the most uh, exclusive IT centers in Asia with several hundred, five, six hundred people who are actually working on apps. Uh, and creating uh, fintech type, type, type technology that were just truly amazing. But they, they, they inside, inside the organization, the challenge was how do we really move thousands of people from the branches? As you know, many of your children and my daughter, they've never been to a branch. And so the, the, the need for branches is becoming much less. And so they needed to move thousands of people from the branches to the outbound. And when we talked about his values, he said his dream is to have a one team. 12,000 people work as one team. They work together regardless of seniority, discuss things, and really serve the customer. And the odds were against uh, us. A, a closest comp competitor tried to move people outside the branches and move them outside, and it was a complete failure. There was so much resistance. Uh, the other thing that was going on is that a lot of people inside the organization were saying, oh, he was trained in the US, and this guy who was uh, coaching us, he's uh, from uh, Berkeley. They thought I was from Berkeley. These are ideas that comes out of Berkeley, and they're not, never going to work here in Thailand. So. Um, he, uh, what, what Kumpachara did, which was really truly amazing, uh, was that he went through his own inside out personal transformation. Uh, at the very young age, he was, he was sent to boarding school in Kansas. And as you can imagine, being the uh, lonely uh, Asian in Kansas, he was subject to uh, uh, bullying. He focused on being super competitive, had a few very close knit friends. And uh, what he realized is because of his past, he did not have access to full self-expression and really connection to people. And that, is, that was one of the obstacles to transform. He realized that he had to transform himself in order to transform this organization. He, he was able to realize that, kind of catch those blind, spot, uh, blind spots, be able to uh, come up with a completely new future that excited him, which was really about having fulfilled and engaged employees that are serving the customers. Research was on his side. Happy people are much more engaged, 30% more engaged, 30% more productive, three times more creative. And as we talked about in our research, when people are engaged and happy, the chance of transformation goes up. So it wasn't just him, but the entire organizations went through the inside out effect that I just discussed. There were cases of. Uh, uh, people in their 60s who were about to retire, who decided to delay retirement because of this exercise and because of this alignment and, and feeling like being part of a cohesive, galvanized team. And they even felt like it really made a difference the way they showed up with their families, children. The results have been phenomenal. The typical uh, downturn that you see in sales of banks have completely reversed. In some regions are doing extremely well. Uh, customer satisfaction 
and also employee satisfaction has gone significantly has improved and all the efforts that they're doing with the uh, apps and data analytics and so forth are now being integrated because the inside out effect work was done so well that if you ask well what about a much larger organization this is exactly what Microsoft did and Microsoft also applied many of the concepts of the uh, byline compass in their very very successful transformation um, the other concept I want to kind of talk to you, it's really about uh, how, do you, how do you create a movement? Once you do this inside out, how do you create a movement within the organization to be successful? And it's really about having volunteer champions and having a new way of operating so that uh, the, uh, the transformation could be successful. Um, the, uh, the key is, number one, is to really be able to recruit an army of champions, our armies of volunteers that are thought leaders in the organization, that are not happy with the way things are, but they have some great ideas about how to make changes. An example of this is VeriSign, which 10% uh, of the entire uh, division that went through transformation were, were part of this armies of champions, volunteer champions, and they were put in, in a structure that was very flat, outside the norms of the hierarchies. So if you think of the hierarchies at Matrix, like the movie Matrix, the, 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 the design was, the, this new structure was put outside, and I know Jim McNerney also uh, talked about this. And so uh, the, the culture here on the right, what we had is a, was a very Silicon Valley, flat, innovative, and there was a very light senior team that oversaw this. There were 15 rapid response team in VeriSign. VeriSign wanted to, uh, this division wanted to move from $300 million to 1 billion sales. In three years, they were actually able to achieve it in two years. But not just that, it was sustainable, it was perpetual, and they were able to transfer this to the rest of the divisions within the VeriSign, and it was a complete success. So, so with, with this type of structure, you have a complete different tenor tone and cadence, and then when you transfer it back to your culture, it'll be able to transform the organization culture. And the Rapid Transformation book that Ricardo talked about talks about this really parallel volunteer army structure. Um, so, so far we've talked about for-profit organization. The HBR book that, uh, HBR article that uh, Ricardo discussed also talked about three cases that applied the Bright Line Transformation framework. Here's the last one I'm going to share with you. It's a, a nonprofit, government-based organization. Uh, Santa Clara County has a large population that uh, it's where Silicon Valley is, uh, that are uh, vulnerable, uh, many homeless. And uh, this, this organization, is, uh, its job is to heal people's pain and, 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 and treat them. They actually, through the Brightline Compass, methodology, they were able to cut down subsidies a whopping $180 million. And at the same time, they were faced with Affordable Care Act, where they had to deal with high increase of the number of vulnerable people that now had to be treated. So what they did is they, they used the, applied the model that Verisign applied, they, they applied the model that K-Bank applied, they, they created a, an army of volunteer champions across the organization, they really made this change happen. Earlier in their effort, they brought in outsiders, paid them uh, $20 million, and unfortunately that uh, uh, project did not go well. Um, one of the things that they did was, um, in order to improve, the, increase the capacity of the hospital, the number of people that they actually take, they went and looked at some of the best cases in the uh, air traffic controllers because they thought that, hey, if we create the model air, air traffic, we can actually be able to be much more efficient in terms of how the patient, patient moves through the system. Uh, doctors, surprising to me, were just amazing in terms of data analysis and technological knowledge. These are two great heroes of that project, uh, Dr. Sanjay Kurani and Dr. Uh, Cliff Wang. And by the way, these are my unsung heroes of the Silicon Valley that I really look up to. Really, really smart guys, have amazing heart. Together with the nurses and others, they've completely transformed this place. And here they're looking at this flow of the hospital. 
Uh, they've also looked at hotel organizations, and what they found is some of the best hotels, how quickly when a, uh, a, uh, a guest leaves a room, how quickly they kind of make up the room ready for the next guest. They had to do the same thing with the rooms and so forth. So I applied that model and were able to get some great, great results. They increased the capacity of this hospital, hospital 30%. And next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a video of one of the projects they worked on. What I'd like you to kind of see as you're watching this video is the excitement, is the inside out effect uh, of, of the people that are working on, in how it has impacted the people, and how people taking charge, creating a movement which is at the core of what we talk about in the, in the Bright Lung Compass could truly make a difference and could, truly could create a cause that uh, could make a difference in people's lives. Santa Clara Valley Medical Center is um, the safety net hospital of Silicon Valley, of all of Santa Clara County. And what was happening is the hospital was getting overcrowded. And when the hospital gets overcrowded, the ER gets overcrowded. We can't just move these patients out while they're still sick and try to get them out. And as we did a deeper dive, what we recognize is the reason why we were overcrowded is there were a lot of patients that we had that were simply non-acute sitting in the hospital. So oftentimes those patients can be in the hospital and not have an acute um, medical need to be there, but they can't be safely discharged to the streets. One of the hospitalists over here, one of our mentors told us that the most dangerous thing you could do for a patient is to discharge them. And with good reason, because in the hospital they are monitored, but once you discharge them, you have no idea what happens. A significant number of them, unfortunately, are homeless. Um, they have very complex medical conditions. So we had to come up with our own bold solution on how to care for these patients. We thought, well, what would be, what would be the ideal uh, transitions uh, model for these patients? And so a number of them, ideally what they would need a, is a full multidisciplinary team to help them with medications, um, to help them with uh, mental health issues. We just kind of flew by the seat of our pants and adapted and learned and changed as we, as we saw fit. It goes back out to going beyond the, the walls, you know, breaking down the silos. Talking to individuals that I would have never talked to. Actually. It involves case managers, social workers, psychiatrists, psychologists. Um, in, you know, it involves so many different departments. They don't have the physical or the social supports that a lot of us take for granted. Essentially, that, that was our compass, was what can we do to take care of the patient? Overall, from a holistic standpoint, it's been an incredible success for us. Every hospital, private or public, encounters this problem and you know, that's why we want to develop something that can hopefully be replicated by others. We want to share the secret. It's, it's incredibly fulfilling, gratifying as a provider to be able to affect um, someone on such a deep and personal level and to see the outcomes that we can achieve. This uh, project has a special place in my heart since my family immigrated uh, to U.S. We stayed in Santa Clara County and uh, these doctors took care of my family, especially my dad, for many, many years. And uh, I hope that my dad is looking down and happy about the work we've done. I hope all of you could, could join us in this movement. Thank you so much, Ricardo.